Hello everyone, so in this video we will go together step by step in the process to create your custom weapons in RPG Builder. This process is extremely easy, it's very quick, creating new weapons can literally be done in seconds, which is why it's not the main topic of this video. Mainly I'm going to show you how you have full control on how your weapons are, you know, presented in your character, so for example in their hand or on their back. Um, based on their race and gender. And the reason that's a thing is because you may already have experienced that in the past. Um, us indie devs, we, you know, rely on a lot of asset packs and things like this. And um, when we use assets coming from different studios, different developers, you already probably experienced that they have completely different scaling, completely different offsets, weird origins and things like that. And when you were thinking you could just drag and drop it in the hand and for it to look good, that's not the case in most um, most of the time. Uh, sometimes it's going to look absolutely tiny. You can't even see the weapon. Sometimes it's going to be massive and sometimes it's even going to be like two meters away from the hand, etc. So um, RPG Builder, of course, provides you a tool or rather in like a system for you to uh, fix all these issues. It is very easy to set up and uh, you will never have to worry about that again. So that's pretty much what I want to show you today. Um, for this video, I'm going to use this axe weapon as an example and, you know, like a showcase. Um, this axe is actually one of the axe coming from the um, Blink art team. So in case you didn't know, Blink is now producing art packs, which you can expect to be out of the month, uh, in, the, in the next, you know, coming month on the asset store. So more information on that later. I did not actually yet um, tested this weapon directly in RPG Builder, but because it's produced by Blink, as you can see, it is set up quite well. And um, before it's launched, I'm going to make sure that each of those weapons are as easy to use as and set up, you know, in RPG Builder. But as we will probably see, uh, it's never perfect because we have one transform slot, for example, for 200, but each weapon looks different, right? So each weapon may need its custom transform data. So that's what I will cover in this video. Anyway, let's get into it. So I'm going to create a new weapon from scratch, like I said. Uh, the editor is going to look different for you. This is the 1.1 version, but really do not worry about that. The process is exactly the same. So um, axe, weapon, one test maybe, or whatever. We don't really care about the name. I'm going to uh, pick a Nikon here up. And all we have to do here is just add the um, equip on use action. Make sure it's indeed a weapon, in this case an axe. The type of course doesn't really matter, but uh, we're dealing with an axe here and this slot type. I'm going to keep it to 200, but you can um, do the exact same thing with all slot types. The process is exactly the same. So I'm going to hide weapon position for now. I'm going to show this a bit later. I first want to show you how it's going to look without the weapon position setup. So here I just drag and drop my weapon model, uh, you know, prefab inside the weapon model field. And I can now just go ahead and save that. So it is now added as an item, as you can see, very easy, very quick. And we will now go in game um, in the demo scene. This will of course work no matter if you use a new character or existing one. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to make one um, and go ahead. So now we are in game, perfect. And I'm going to uh, give myself the test weapon. So I'm just going to type test in the developer panel. And now you see that we have the axe weapon one test in your back. So if I now right click it, it just works like any other item. We can hover it, you know, it's like inside the character panel. Uh, the tooltip is of course not showing much because we didn't add any stat, any damage, any attack speed, etc. But um, as you can see, the issue here is that it doesn't look terrible. It is actually where it should be. So we are not in combat. So right now it's on the back, etc. But it doesn't look correct, right? Like nobody will carry an axe like that. And this is where, um, this is where uh, the weapon position data actually enter in place. So here we have the axe weapon test one. And here we have weapon position data. So first I want to show you uh, how to simply, you know, um, actually modify this weapon position and make sure it's going to be effective every single time after you, um, you, you know, equip it. So you can type the name of the weapon here if you want, but an easy way to find this weapon game object is to go to the player. So you select your player and you open the player appearance handler component and you can just highlight the weapon one or weapon two, whatever your 
currently you know looking for and now i can double click or press f and go to it now i'm not going to do any like massive change all i want is actually just put it a bit lower on my back now i'm going to check in game again and i think i also want to uh, rotate it a little bit like this okay so i'm actually satisfied with how it looks right now i'm not saying it's perfect but you can spend whatever time you want tweaking the settings and you can also tweak the scale so that's what i'm going to show you right now so now that we are back in uh, general items and we have you know our weapon selected uh, we can go ahead and click add brace data under the weapon position um, sections now don't get overwhelmed with all those fields extra it might look a bit confusing but it is actually very easy there is absolutely nothing complicated here so let me break it down in a very easy way for you so first of all we can add as many as we want of those things so as you can see um each of those things are for a specific race the first field here is going to let us select the race this data is for in this case i only have human uh, created in this project so i'm going to just assign human but if you if you wanted for example elf you could assign the elf race here and uh, when we equip this weapon rpg builder is going to check okay what race are we human or elf and if you're an elf it's going to use these settings let's go back to the human part now so like i said first we select a race now after that you see that it's split in two sections and we actually have male and female. So this is for the genders, right? Um, because not only you have full control on how this weapon is going to look for the human race, but also for each gender. Now, once again, it's in each gender, it's once again split into different categories. And the first one is when we are in combat. And the second one is when we are resting, so outside of combat. So uh, you have full control on how your weapon is going to look like right now, when we're just, you know, chilling inside the um, uh, village, for example, as well as, you know, like when we are in combat, so when you actually fight mobs and things like that. So uh, the last thing we want to do now, now that we are, you know, satisfied with how this axe is looking, etc., we just go ahead and actually, you can also decide, of course, to type those values manually. But what I'm going to do is even easier. I'm going to drag and drop this axe inside the scene reference here make sure you drag and drop the actual game object so the axe not any slot or not the player or whatever it needs to be the actual weapon game object and on top of that it also needs to be inside the correct slot um otherwise it's not going to work the data is going to be wrong so like i said we just drag and drop this and as you can see we didn't have to do anything it assigned all the transform values here now all i have to do is hit save i'm going to now go back in game and as you can see, I'm going to unequip the weapon. And the next time you equip it, you can see that it is now using our settings we just set up. So it's perfect. Um, now, like I said, this will be the exact same process for the female and the combat. So I can go ahead now and, um, you know, start fighting, for example, one of those dummy targets here. And you will see that um, the weapon, is, uh, the position is most likely going to be wrong. Okay, so now... What we have here is a um, the axe is completely flipped on the opposite direction, right? So I'm going to go ahead and um, find it again in our character because now it's under the combat slot. It's different than before. Go back to hit, and uh, I'm going to stay in combat, like actually, like this. I can actually make it easier and pause. So if you pause the game. It will, you know, um, stop the animation and everything, which is making it a lot easier for you to um, actually tweak the settings. If the character is moving at the same time, it can be a little bit confusing. So um, maybe a bit higher in the end. And I think that's kind of it. Um, I think it looks decent. Like I said, this video is not really to um, go too much in detail. I'm going to collapse those... Um, NPC spawners, it's taking a lot of screen space. Okay, so it's cleaner now. But yeah, I think it looks fine. And the process is the same. Now what I will do is uh, find the weapon. And it is here, this one. And now I just drag and drop this inside the combat scene reference, not the rest one, of course. Otherwise, it's going to override this. So now, if I hit save, we now have all the settings perfectly set up for human race and the male. So if I now leave 
um, pause, I can, you know, unequip it, or I mean, you can still keep it uh, equipped if you wanted to. And um, I can just, you know, start fighting this mob or whatever. And as you can see, of course, there is no like beautiful animation extra setup for this character yet. But as you can see, the weapon is um, perfectly in the hand now. Can unequip again just to show you and make sure yeah perfect it works fine so that's pretty much all the process for this uh, system and you pretty much just need to repeat it um for your uh, weapons like based on the gender the race etc so the reason it's actually split by race etc i could have just set one setting but you know rpg builder is here to give you as much option as possible uh the reason for that is a perfect example you may not have played it, but you probably know about it. Uh, let's think of World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft have gnomes, dwarves, tauren, orcs, so very, very different races, right? Um, they are all different size, all different um, model, etc. And of course, this axe will not look the same uh, on a gnome than it will look on a tauren, right? So this lets you scale. Um, here you see it's 1, 1, 1, but we could go ahead and... Um, Make it, for example, 555, five, five, save. Now, if I go in game and um, uh, re equip this weapon, you see that the axe is now massive. Of course, this looks kind of goofy, but uh, you get the idea. If you have a really small race, uh, you can make it very small. If you have a bigger race, you can make the weapon bigger. And um, as I said before, of course, you can not only change the scale, but everything else. So that's pretty much it. I hope it was clear enough. I hope it's helpful. And this will fix any issue you have with any of your uh, weapon packs. And this makes it possible to use any existing model with um, RPG Builder. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.